Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's power move, we're gonna talk about what happens when a loft goes bad. And this most commonly happens when you've got two profiles which have a different number of entities. So this profile here has a total of one, two, three, four entities. This profile here has a total of one, two, three, four, five, six entities. And so when I loft those two profiles together, we can see that the results really are not aesthetically pleasing. This really doesn't look right. And so today we're gonna talk about how to resolve this issue. And this is something that we talk about in an upcoming training class that I'm hosting called P102, Toby's Advanced SW Part Design. And if you wanna join me for this class, we're gonna be hosting it a little later this month and you can register over at www.twotalltoby.com slash training. This is gonna be two days of live training with a certified instructor, me. You're gonna get a chance to ask any questions that you have. We're gonna create models like this and other advanced part design type models together and uh, it takes place around the world via web meeting. So if you want to join us live for that instructor-led training later this month, be sure to visit us at twotalltoby.com slash training, and you can register for this class or any of our upcoming training classes. All right, so like I said, the problem with this loft is that we've got the incorrect number or mismatched number of entities between our profiles. And so if we go to this other example that I've created here, the correct way to resolve this issue is to break up this profile so it has six entities. And the easiest way to do that would be to add a break to the arc here and a break to the arc here. So then we would have one, two, three, four, five, six entities in both of our profiles. And the way that we do that in SolidWorks is we do a right mouse button, edit sketch, then we right mouse button on that arc and we choose sketch tools, split entities. And once we choose split entities, we can choose this point here and this point here. So what I'm doing is I clicked on the arc, which broke it into two entities, and then I'm gonna click on the arc again over here, and that breaks it into one, two, three entities. Now, we can take this point and this point and make them horizontal. That creates kind of like a, a poor man symmetry when, you, when you're working with an arc, the natural symmetry of an arc. And then we can use kind of a bonus tip that I like to teach my students. When you begin the smart dimension command, if you click a point, a center point and a third point, SolidWorks will give you an angle dimension. Kind of cool, little bonus tip there for my students. So now I've got a parametrically driven break here in this arc, breaking it into three segments. And now if we go to the loft command, we can choose features loft and loft this profile into this profile over here. And so that gives us a really nice result because now what's happening is SolidWorks is automatically connecting this node to this node, connecting this node to this node. It's very predictable. Um, we end up with a really nice result there from the loft. And if we click on this surface here, we see that parametric dimension shows up. So we could make that a little bit larger, which would make this panel here a little smaller, or we could decrease that angle. Let's say we make it like 35, which is gonna make this side panel here wrap up and around a little bit further. So because we've got that parametric dimension, it really makes it easy for us to make changes as we're working with the customer. Now, that is the correct way to do this, but there is kind of a hidden way that you can get very similar results. Let's go back here to the version that we created that didn't look so good. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna right mouse button on this loft and choose edit feature. And anytime you create a loft or edit a loft in SolidWorks, you can right mouse button in the background and you can say show all connectors. And what this will do is this will actually show you everywhere that SolidWorks is connecting node to node for this loft. And so what this means is that we can take these nodes and drag them and change the result from our loft. So we can see here across the bottom, we're getting this node here at the middle of the tombstone connecting to this corner of the hex. And that's kind of where the beginning of our twist is happening. Well, if we just take that node and we drag it over here to the corner, that leaves us with a nice flat panel on the bottom of this loft. Then we could maybe take this node here, which is in the middle of this line and drag it up and maybe take this node here and drag it up and around the arc. Now, once again, we can drag this up to that corner there we go, that gets rid of that extra node there. And then we can take this node here on the arc and drag it around. And now we're basically creating the same geometry that we had in the previous example. We've broken up this arc into one, two, three segments, but we didn't actually split the curve. We're just doing it by manipulating these loft connector handles. And so when we're done, we can hit the green check mark and look at that, that looks pretty darn good as well. 
Now, like I said, the correct way to do this is to break up that arc. That gives you a nice parametric dimension that you can modify, but this certainly works, and it's certainly a technique that I've used many times in surface modeling. When a loft just doesn't quite look right, I'll edit the loft and I'll choose show all loft connectors. So I hope you enjoyed today's power move. And if you're gonna be modeling a lot of advanced part design type of geometry, consider taking our upcoming training class at twotalltoby.com slash training. We'd love to see you in there. And of course, if you enjoyed today's power move, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for some more power moves.